and a warm welcome to this video lesson on Google Drawings Image Shape Text Format Drop Shadow Reflection which is pretty much what you see on screen. On visiting Google Drawings today just for a quick little go I saw something new which I'm super excited about and I want to spread the word and share to everyone else who's interested. Now let's get started and first of all I'm going to do all of this by losing the title and the menu um, commands at the top. So I'm going to do that by just reducing um, to this screen which makes it easier for you to see and maximizes the screen. So let's get started. Image. I'm going to select one from photos. Notice how photos has seamlessly opened up on the right hand side. You've also got access to your albums there. I was out yesterday in a chilly November tea time um, looking at the sunset. So I'm going to demonstrate with one. Let's choose this one. And all I'm going to do is drag it inside. And we have an image like this. At this stage I'm going to close that and bring the image to be quite smallish. And I'm just going to leave it there as a demonstration. Now this is the thing that is really interesting and as a point talking about all this reflection business is that if I went over to use my Picasso 3.9 that I've used for many many years I can select a couple of images and make a collage and I'll tell you why this is on point. If I hit this button here called create photo collage I've been using this tiny little drop shadow for my blogging and photos for like years and years probably about eight or nine years. If you notice very very carefully these two images are on a white background and it says draw shadows. If I uncheck you see that it's a very hard line on the outside of the photo. Draw shadow check on has got like a little bit of shadow and I love this and I could never do it with Google Drawings which of course now we can. So let's see how we do this. So at the moment clicking away we have the image there with quite um, strong borders. So what we need to do is click on it once and then you'll see up the top right hand side here of course a little while ago we've got the masking and the shapes which is always in. We've got reset image and we've got replace image. Format options are very very interesting. Going from the top which we've had for a good old while is no recolor all the way down to everything else. So if I wanted to um, inverse this image I could uh, inverse it and do loads of things with it. I think we know that those ones have been there if you've been looking at it. We can also look at the adjustments of course which is transparency, brightness and contrast. The big deal here is that if we lose that we can see drop shadow and reflection. So watch this closely. Drop shadow check now immediately you see not much has happened. Okay, not really, not a lot. So what I'm going to do is just click the image again and then exaggerate everything. So I'm going to leave transparency. Now notice if you click this once and I'm going to click and hold down and move it, it is at 50%. You can also use, I believe, yeah, there we go. Look, I'm using my keyboard up and down arrows to get back to 50. I'm going to leave transparency at the moment. Angle. Um, distance is the biggie because there's no distance. So if I increase the distance up to say 50%, you can clearly see that we've got a drop shadow. Click back on again and we can mess around with this a lot. Bringing the slider down to the left. There we go. Look, can we see our drop shadow? Now, if you look at transparency, I've got 93 transparent, I've got super solid black. I'm going to leave it in the middle, about there. Then I'm going to say blur radius and you can get the idea where you don't really need me. What you need to do is have a play around yourself. Now if I bring in the blur radius to pretty much nothing, all I've done is I've dropped a shadow which is really nice. And that's it. You can change any of the colors. Let's have a red one. OK, then we can come along and we can say click on it again and I'm just going to leave this um, as the black but of course it's 50% um, transparent goes to a grey and I'm going to reduce um, the drop shadow and I'm going to look at the reflection. Now this time I'm going to make this a lot smaller and the reason I'm going to do that is because of course it's looking at a reflection which is checkbox immediately we've got transparency, distance and size. So at the moment 
I've got transparency. Let's put it up to 50% and you can see not much has happened, has it? Let's just do it one more time. Okay, I, I understand. Yeah, what's happening is that um, if I put the transparency down to zero, it's actually shadowing underneath. So the distance, increase the distance to say 50, and you can see. Now this is interesting, that because of the size, you can see no sky on there. So I believe, and again, I've only discovered this feature myself um, a few minutes ago, and that's why I wanted to share it, um, because it's the teacher in me. If I go down to size 1%, if I go up to 100%, there we go, look, we've actually now got the full image, which kind of like drops off. Um, in other words, it's quite a big distance between those two. So if I bring the distance in, I can now play around with it and I can actually get like a little... Now being honest, we, we've made a mess here, which I can take the drop shadow off and you can see that we've just had a reflection of that image. That is it, apart from to say, if we go on and do something else like a shape and I'm just going to throw in a oval it, everything exactly works so there's my oval if I wanted to say fill that with a color let's fill it with a you know a color and then we um, wanted to oh sorry that what I've done is I've just put a white um, rectangle at the back here to get rid of the checkboards. So going back to this oval, if we want to do a drop shadow on the oval, there it is. And if we do the distance away, I can do the same. And then also, of course, I can reflect this oval um, size, distance. Was it size or distance? Uh, size, wasn't it? So go up to size and you can see that works. And of course, the other part where we went down to... Um, I think where it was now. Uh, the original text example was something I looked at and I want to finish this video, I want to finish this video. Of course I do. And there was the text example where exactly the same thing. So fill in your text and then to get to these what we can do is select the text, right click it and we can see format options. The moment you click those format options we can bring in, and I'm going to make a bit of a mess here intentionally, because I think the sharing part and the learning part is already over in this video. In other words, how to do it and how to find it. Now, must finish, must finish to say that if you go up to help and you look for all this formatting help in terms of a get help with, I personally couldn't find anything. So please, please let me know how you get on with this. I personally think this is an awesome, awesome addition to Google um, Drawings. Don't know how long it's been here, but I discovered it today, which reinforces the idea that Google Drawings is a phenomenal piece of stuff. Have a lovely day.